Hi, everybody. It's Pastor Rob with today's Bible Break Devotion. Today, we're in Proverbs chapter 7. We're continuing our series, Principles in Proverbs. Today's principle is the fear or the respect of the Lord. Let me read to you Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 7. The Bible says this, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. It's interesting that the fear of the Lord is a primary principle in the Word of God. What does that mean? It means it is a key to understanding, to unlocking, uh, to living uh, the truths contained in the Bible. Now, that that phrase, uh, the fear of the Lord, it appears all throughout the Bible. In the book of Proverbs, it appears 15 times. Uh, and that'd be a good Bible study. You say, Pastor, what's a good Bible study? I would encourage you to do a, a Bible study on every place in the book of Proverbs, where in God's book of wisdom, it talks about the fear of the Lord. Now, some of you might be confused by that. I know I was as a young Christian. And you say, well, now, I, I don't understand that, Pastor. I, I thought God loved me and God cares for me and God watches over me. And yet, the, yet uh, I'm supposed to fear him. Now, we wouldn't use that term today. We would use the term reverential respect. We would say, I, I'm not, a, listen, I'm not afraid of God. I'm not afraid God is going to harm me, that God is going to hurt me, uh, that God is going to punish me, uh, but I am going to give God the reverential respect. Let me give you two examples. Number one, uh, when you're young and you're growing up and your mother or your father used your middle name, your first, last, uh, first, middle, and last name, all right? When they use your full name, you know, bless God, you're in trouble, all right? When my mom, Miss Sherry Pofel, would use my full name, or instead of calling me Rob or Robbie, she called me Robert Lee Pofel. Let me tell you something. I knew it was on. I was in trouble. And uh, I, there was the fear of mama. Uh, and if you've ever had the, let me give you another one. Uh, if you've ever happened to uh, maybe transgressed a traffic violation, uh, maybe you were going a little too fast, wink, wink, nod, nod. Uh, maybe you didn't have your seatbelt on or something silly like that. And uh, you got hauled in before the judge. And uh, they say, all rise, and everybody stands up. Uh, let me tell you something. Your heart's beating a little faster. You got that little uh, lump in your throat. You know why? Uh, because that man, because of his position, his power, and his authority, deserves reverential respect. Now, listen, let me explain to you the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is this. And, and by the way, there is a, this is one of the areas where there is a vast divide between the child of God and the, uh, uh, the non-child of God, the Christian and the non-Christian. Uh, listen, as the Christian, we are the children of God. He is your heavenly father. The Bible says in the New Testament, for we are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. When God becomes your heavenly father, listen, you don't fear his harm or his wrath or his judgment. Jesus took that. It's one of the great benefits and blessings of being a Christian. Now listen, my friend, if you're not a Christian, if you're not a believer, God is not your father, all right? Contrary to popular opinion, God is not your father. He is your creator. Uh, the Bible says, and uh, by the virtue of birth, you are in his dominion. You are his creature, his creation. And the fact that he created the heaven and the earth, you say, oh, preacher, do you really believe in Genesis and uh, creation? Jesus did. And uh, by the way, if you don't believe in creation, you don't believe in Jesus, or if you do believe in Jesus and you want to believe like Jesus, then you have to believe in creation. And listen, if you're a, a part of this earth, you're a part of God's creation. Uh, but by natural birth, you're not a part of his family, but you are a part of his dominion. And the Bible says in the book of Revelation in verse 20, all of those who are not his children will stand at a place of judgment. And now that judgment, my friend, is a judgment that ought to scare the wee willies and the heebie-jeebies out of you. And it's one of the great reasons why, quite frankly, I became a Christian. I didn't want to face God's wrath. I didn't want to face God's punishment. I didn't want to have all the books open and have everything I've ever said and, and done and thought uh, exposed before all of humanity and me get judged on the standards of a righteous and a holy God. I said, no, no, no. I became a Christian. You know why? Because the Bible says he, Jesus, became sin for me who knew no sin that I might have the righteousness of Christ in him. Listen, it was the greatest transaction I ever made. Jesus took all my sins and gave me all of his righteousness. And so when I stand before God, I stand forgiven. That's what it means to be a Christian. It doesn't mean I'm perfect. It means I'm forgiven. Now, let me get back to this. All right. The fear of the Lord, God's reverential respect. What it does is, number one, it recognizes the fear of the Lord recognizes first God's place. God deserves first place. Number two, it recognizes his power. He is your creator. He is your sustainer. 
May I say, if you're saved, he is your savior. And at the end of this life, and he will still be your judge. Now, God is not judging the Christian on his sins or her sins. He's judging us on what we have done for him. It's the it's like the Olympics. The Olympic athlete uh, gets rewarded for how they have run. That's the uh, That is the judgment seat of Christ. Very different than the great white throne judgment. But listen, he is our judge. So it recognized the fear of the Lord recognizes God's place. He deserves first place. He deserves that reverential respect. Number two, it recognizes his power. It recognizes the fact that God has the power to hold us accountable. He has the right. He has the legal authority. He is the creator of the universe. Now listen, it also recognizes our place. The fear of the Lord, it recognizes our place. It says, God, you have first place. I have second place. God, what you say, I will listen. And God, I will obey. The fear of the Lord, uh, it's a, there, there's so many wonderful things. I, I don't have time in this particular devotion to go all over it, but God says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. You don't rightly understand things without putting God in his first place. The Bible also says that the fear of the Lord uh, is the beginning of wisdom, the, under, the application of knowledge. Uh, the fear of the Lord, there is life. There's, there's so many wonderful things by giving God his reverential respect. So I hope today that you will fear the Lord. You will give him the reverential respect that he's due. He's God. He deserves to be listened to. He deserves to be honored. He deserves to be respected. So my friend, that's the fear of the Lord. I hope you've been a blessing. I hope this has been an encouragement and a help to you. Until we meet again, let's keep looking unto Jesus.